Hello, everyone. Um, good afternoon. Today, I'm uh, with one of my very good friend, Ruben and Evan. Sorry for the pronunciation. Um, uh, I'd like to welcome him. Hi, Ruben. How are you? Hey, Hannah. I'm doing really good. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate your time. And um, thank you for being there all the time. And I need your help. So <laughs> tell us something about yourself. Well, uh, I'm uh, the executive producer here at Faith Life, which is uh, in Washington State, so in Bellingham. So I'm not too far from where you're at there in Vancouver, you know, probably mm -hmm. half an hour or so from you. Uh, but, uh, you know, these days we've got that closed border between America and Canada, so it feels really mm -hmm. far. But, you know, the uh, here at Faith Life, what we do is we serve the church in a lot of different ways, a lot of different products. And so our team, we create videos. So we share with people about the different products that we make. Uh, but in addition, we've also created uh, documentary films and series. We just got through our latest one is called Angels with Dr. Mike Heiser. And you can see it on faithlifetv.com. Uh, That's wonderful. So you have your own production team, your crew, everybody with you in the same office? Yeah, that's right. So here uh, in the in the team, we've got a producer, uh, Jean Go. We've got a director, uh, Brian Russell, as well as myself. I do much of the directing. Uh, we've got an editor, Glenn Allen, and we actually have our graphics, our motion graphics, uh, Alexis. He is actually down in Mexico. Uh, so we've got a we've got an international team uh, right here and working on those projects. That's wonderful. Um, I just wanted to let you know that um, he has a great church and also a great family. So um, tell us about your church, how, what they have contributed or supporting you in all this ministry work. Yeah, so, you know, I go to actually Redeemer Northwest here in Bellingham. It's a, a wonderful Christian church, non-denominational church. You know, they've really supported our family for years as, as we've been going there, married with, with four kids. And um, so it's been, it's been really great to have their prayer support. And, and, um, and just, uh, we actually have a number of people who work here at Faith Life, whether it's in the technology side of things, like making Logos Bible software, um, uh, or the media side of things like, like we do. Uh, and one, uh, one friend that I forgot to mention there is Jared Coates, who actually produced uh, Angels. He's on our team as well. Um, and, uh, uh, and so, yeah, so it's just, it's great to be able to have an impact uh, for the church and, and for the Lord through, you know, our gifts and talents. That's right. It's very important that God has um, given you talents which you can use for his kingdom. And especially when you have good people and you have good connection and you have support behind with the body of Christ, which is so, so big, I think, huge blessing. Yeah, it's you're amazing. right. It really is. Yes. It really is. We've got folks all over the world who have uh, used our products and our services and uh, seen our films and, and programs. And so it's just really, it's really a blessing to have those people out there. Wonderful. So tell us something about Hannah's dream, um, how we got connected and why you were interested in knowing or connecting or working on this project. Yeah. So, you know, I, one of the things that I uh, find this most important is just to be open to the leading of the Lord. And so when God brings relationships or friendships your way, I, I think that it's important to take those opportunities and just ask that question, well, what is God doing here? What's, what, what's the door that's open? So uh, for me, through Faith Life, I've worked on documentary films and also narrative films like uh, a Christmas this film called The Farmer and the Bell, a Christian film that just, just came out this past year with Jen Gotson and Jim Chandler. Uh, and the uh, there was a great experience working there as an associate producer and co-writer. Uh, but really for me, I was, you know, really kind of open, open to opportunities to do more producing uh, and directing on narrative features. And so when your project came through, I, I looked at that and I thought, oh boy, that really, uh, that, that sounds like a project that really comes from the heart. I remember uh, as a young uh, teenager getting newsletters from organizations like uh, Voice of the Martyrs, where they would really detail the, uh, the trials and persecutions that uh, believers were going through all over the world. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it reminds you of the blessings that we have here in North America, of the freedoms that we have. Um, but also, uh, the, uh, when you witness the faith uh, that is, you know, perhaps under fire that these persecuted believers go through, 
you can see that uh, even through their difficult circumstances that they've been given spiritual gifts yeah. that, um, that we, you know, we may not have in those ways. So we can yeah. learn from those persecuted believers and they have a lot that they can teach us here in North America, mm. as opposed to just, you know, America going in and saving the day, which we know doesn't always happen, especially from the, you know, the events that we've recently have witnessed in Afghanistan. And mm. so I think that it's really important to see that uh, Jesus works in those difficult circumstances. And even when things are going um, incredibly bad, that, that he is working and he is present. And so I think that that's what uh, I, I find attractive about uh, the project Hannah's Dream. Thank you for your interest. Um, so in, in all this mist, as you know, the dream is given to me by God, but I still say it's now God's dream, which I'm trying to fulfill. And I'm trying to contact people. That's how I contacted you and many other. Thank you so much for giving your precious time uh, from a busy life. As you said, we are so uh, in a comfort zone here that we don't realize the pain, the suffering, or maybe even one day, if you don't have proper uh, meal, how it would be. So they are not having one even like proper, like they don't have KFC and McDonald's and Starbucks. They don't have anything like that. So I don't know how people, what do you say? How people can contribute to this um, persecution project or even Hannah's dream? What, what do you say to the body of Christ? Boy, that is a, that's a great question. I think that the, the number one thing that always stuck with me when talking about the persecuted church is a, a story I heard, I don't even remember what country it was from, but somebody was asking a persecuted Christian, um, you know, what, how do you deal with the, with the challenge of suffering? And this, this, I believe it was a pastor and he said like, you know, it's, it's incredibly challenging, but from our perspective, we see, prosperity as a far greater threat than persecution to genuine faith. And so I think about the passages where Jesus talked about, it's easier for a rich man to, uh, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Right. We are incomparably rich compared to those believers who are undergoing those persecutions but we so often tend to think that we're well off and that we're okay spiritually as well and when all the the you know when all of our works come into account before the lord i really wonder uh, will we be as rich um spiritually as as we are financially will we have uh will we find out that the genuine stores of wealth are really, are really within those who have endured the greatest persecution. Mm -hmm. um, so taking moments and reading stories of believers who have been persecuted for their faith, uh, whether that's ancient Rome or current day, I think taking that time and listening will bring our priorities more into focus. Yeah. And I think that getting spiritual priorities higher in focus than political priorities or financial mm -hmm. priorities, I think that uh, that's really where the American church, the North American church, the prosperous church needs to put our attention. That's right. That's hundred percent. I agree with you, because when we are in too much comfort zone, we sometimes forget, or maybe ignore, or maybe we know, but we don't see because we have so much around and so much and so many. So, what do you say? How we can contribute, or how we can support these um, persecuted families, or even? to the projects which are working for persecution or even like Hannah's dream. Yeah, so there are, there are of course organizations out there who specialize in supporting the persecuted church and you can find those online. They have, they have uh, great opportunities to connect with indigenous pastors 
uh, to be able to place funds exactly where they need to go. So I think that that's a great thing, number one. Uh, number two is um, becoming aware of efforts to um, raise the profile of the persecuted church in ways that really speak to the heart. So I think like a project like Hannah's Dream, if that's uh, through uh, support, financial support of the project, um, uh, through the various ways that a, that a film can be funded. If it is uh, watching those, those films and those projects like um, uh, on various outlets, you know, maybe it's Amazon or whatever, when you watch that, that, that view goes back to the filmmakers to, to help them to be able to um, just keep making more work. Uh, also, like, you know, for, for those um, filmmakers and professionals who might actually have some kind of platform, maybe it's a YouTube channel, maybe it's a Facebook page or, or what have you, what can you do to help spotlight projects that are bringing attention to the persecuted church? Uh, I think that all of those things uh, are ways that we can help uh, lift up our brothers and sisters in need. Yeah, and this is also another way we are having um, like interviews or having phone calls or even some people had uh, taken podcast interviews. So there are different ways we can create awareness. Um, and this is, to be honest with you, it's coming very close to us. We, we have not had that thing i had in my past i know exactly when i say persecution but i'm not saying i'm not praying i'm not encouraging anything like that but i i can feel it's very close to our even maybe doorstep i don't know um things are happening in a very wrong direction going and things are very bad and people are politics and whatnot is going on around so we need to pray we need to get together as a body of christ we need to intercede and if we will not say or do then who will do it right yeah no i i agree i agree that's what the lord calls us and lays those things on our hearts yeah, thank you so much for your time again. I just like to ask in the end, do you have anything you like to share with the audience? Anything you like to um, share about your uh, projects or your uh, contact information? Anything you like to share? Yeah, no problem. Uh, you know, I would love, to, like I said, I'd love to uh, have folks go to faithlifetv.com and check out Angels. It can You can purchase that series on there. It's part of the Unseen Realm series. So it's a great documentary series. If you really like to dig into the Bible and to the supernatural side of things, I think you'd really enjoy um, some of that. Uh, I'm on Facebook and I can, you know, find Ruben Evans on there. Uh, I'd love to, uh, and IMDB. Um, but love to love to chat and uh, and just you know love to support those who are uh, seeking to serve the Lord in those areas of ministry and 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 filmmaking for His glory. Thank you, thank you so much for everything. And again, um, we request all the audience, whoever is watching and will be watching uh, on our page, website, Facebook, please come forward, help the persecuted church and help the body of Christ, because this these are the last days. These are very, very tough days. And as a brothers and sisters, we have to help each other. If we will not do, then who will do? So thank you so much. God bless you. God bless your ministry, your work and family and hope that we work together soon. Yes. God bless you too, Hannah. We'll talk to you later. Sure. Bye.